Hello everyone, we are the Paradox, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to make material for our cowl shirt, and adding some details to it on ZBrush, and finally render it at Arnold. If you want to learn how to make a cowl shirt on the Marvelous Designer, I posted a video of how to make it on my channel, you can also see that. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to it and hit the notification button, so you do not miss our future videos. Well, let's not waste any more time and go to it. Before exporting the clothes, we must unwrap them and go to the UV editor menu. There are several points to consider. All clusters should be placed in one of the UV squares, so that none of the clusters collide with each other, and also do not leave the UV square. It is recommended to do this whole process in VU under number U1V1. These clusters should be placed, so that they are the largest size that fits in a square. It is better to enlarge or shrink all the clusters together, so that the quality of the texture that is placed on it is the same everywhere. If you need one of the clusters to be of higher quality, you can make it larger separately. In this case, we can even use the UDIM feature. That is instead of one of the squares, we should use some to have better textures and larger clusters, which in this case, it is better to start filling the UV space from U1V1, U1V2, U1V3, respectively. After completing the unwrapping process, we return to the model. We check the model to find the defects of the work. If the topology of our model is triangular, it is better to quadrangulate it to be better processed in ZBrush. We check the number of particles to find the right size. The point to keep in mind is that the number does not have to be high. To the extent that it has a good view from a distance. Considering that we work with several software, it is better to get the model in the most optimal output mode, and work on the details in ZBrush. After completing the checks, you can now output. A few things are serious in the output settings of the model. To be able to work more easily in ZBrush and not deal with different sub-tools, it is better to activate the single object option. Otherwise, each piece of fabric becomes a separate object separately, and if the details in the model increase at the edge of the garment, we will encounter problems that require a lot of time to edit. So be sure to output all objects as a separate object. Take the model as a thin output, so that no thickness is considered for the model and activate the weld checkbox. To weld the disruptive vertices together, otherwise, we will encounter several problems later in the edges. In ZBrush we enter the model and see that it has no thickness and all the models are a poly group, and in case of divide operation, details are added to the model and we do not encounter any problems. And we start to increase the details on the model, which uses several types of brushes in the project to get the right wrinkles and details. The details should not be so much that the appearance of the model changes completely, and too much detail causes us to move away from the generality of the model. So it is better to save the effect after applying each change, and look at it after a while to see the generality of the model.
After finishing the details process, it is time to get an output from Sprush. We need two types of output. The first is the low poly output that we can easily run in other software, and because this output is small, it speeds us up a lot. But this small output loses a lot of detail, and may be very different from what we envision. In this case, the second output helps us to recover lost details. The second output is high poly and may be very heavy and bulky, and cannot be used directly in other software, as it takes a long time to process. This output may even take a long time indirectly, and it is better to apply decimation operation on it, to keep it a little lighter while preserving the details. This operation eliminates the model topology and in some cases unwraps the model, which has no effect on the continuation of the work, and what matters in the high poly model is its location, and make sure that the model is exactly where the compact model is located. Output the file as OBJ or FBX. My suggestion is FBX so that smooth groups are applied to the model, and the model is not seen sharply in other software. In the Substance Painter, we enter the compact model and see that the details are lost. To solve this problem, we have to bake the high poly model on this model. To do this, in the Texture Set Settings section, click on the Bake Mesh Map, and in the High Poly Parameters section, enter the full volume model, and determine the maps based on need, and in the Output Size section, specify the quality of the textures, and bake the model. After finishing the baking process, we see that the details of the high poly model are on our model as a normal map. Now our model is ready to make the material, and we will continue the process of making the material. If the texture is loaded late on the model, we can change the texture quality in the texture set setting, to increase the speed of the process. In the process of making materials, we use smart materials, smart masks, default textures, and many other things. In many cases, we use generators to increase the details of the material. These generators are available by default, and we can even produce them ourselves.
After making the material, it is time to output our textures. Because we do the rendering process in Arnold, we set the template to Arnold, and if we needed opacity or illumination maps, we had to add it manually to the outputs, and finally, we output the textures. We enter Maya and enter the model in the studio. And after placing the camera and adjusting the lights, we start importing textures, and in the hyper shader, by creating an eye standard surface, we start connecting textures to each of our parts. Different lights may be used, including BUMP2D, Displacement Shader, Divide, and then we attribute the fabricated material to the model. We start testing the renderings, and in case of any problem in the light or material, we go to the relevant section and correct it, to reach the desired light or material. Thank you guys for watching this video.
I hope this video was helpful to you and could have added something to your information. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to it so that you do not miss my future videos. If you like this video, please like it, it will help me a lot. If you have any questions, you can say them in the comments section. So I will see you in the future tutorials.